orbital velocity desired and velocity from the Earth. We will show how to calculate the velocity desired for a particular orbit and the delta V that we achieve from the Earth's rotation. Isaac Newton calculated the velocity required to achieve circular orbit using his cannonball thought experiment. So here we have a picture of the Earth <clears throat> with a um, cannon on, a mo on top of a mountain and it shoots a projectile at some low velocity and it goes and hits the Earth at point A. It falls towards the Earth, but it travels off to the right as it's doing that. With a little higher velocity, the cannonball, we're assuming no drag by the way, uh, travels along to the right and gets a little further to point B before hitting the Earth. And then in trajectory C we see that what happens is the cannonball is going off to the right and is falling, but as it's falling towards the Earth, the Earth is also more or less falling away. The curvature of the Earth is dropping as well. And uh, in the circular orbit, uh, these two curvatures are parallel so that although it's falling towards the Earth, it has enough speed horizontally to start off with such that it never actually hits the Earth. If the cannonball had even higher velocity, instead of falling towards the Earth uh, at, at the same rate of the curvature of the Earth such that it was a circular orbit, it would actually rise above and end up in this elliptic orbit. Let's go ahead and uh, take Newton's cannonball thought experiment a little further and, and, and calculate the circular orbit velocity that you need. So here we have a little circle representing the Earth and a cannon uh, firing a cannonball. And we have this little dashed line, and here's the ball. And we have this height that it falls and this uh, downrange distance x. And using the falling body equations, We know that h is one half g t squared. That's how far it drops, and uh, the, the for velocity, uh, the x distance for velocity v is v times t. Now let's look at the curvature of the Earth. So here we have the radius of the Earth, and when the cannonball is over here at a distance h. Um, and we've gone through this angle theta, so here's a Greek letter theta, which is written T-H-E-T-A. It's just a circle with a line through it, a horizontal line. Uh, we have the height is r minus r projected through cosine theta, that's this distance, so that we subtract off that distance <coughs> to get the height. Um, or the drop distance, and then x is found by r times sine theta. So that's this distance. Now, we're going to assume that theta is a very small angle, so we can use this expansion. These are trig expansions. Cosine of theta is approximately 1 minus 1 half theta squared plus other terms. But for very small theta, we just carry these first two terms, the 1 and the minus 1 half theta squared. Sine theta is approximately equal to theta, and of course this is in radians. <clears throat> and so now we can write a simplified equation for h uh, because we have r minus r cosine theta, and we subtract r times 1, it gets rid of the first r, and then when we subtract a negative 1 half theta squared with r, we just have positive r theta squared over 2. x is 
approximately r times theta using the sine expansion and therefore theta is x over r and now we can write we can put in this equation we can plug in the value for theta which is x over r we square that so we have x over r squared r and then 2 is downstairs r squared downstairs cancels one of the uh, cancels the r upstairs so we have an r downstairs so we have x squared over 2r now we've got these two equations so we can use x equals h equals x squared over 2r and h equals 1 half gt squared so we have this on the right on the left I've plugged in for x vt so we square that v squared t squared upstairs and then downstairs 2r notice that we can cancel the 1 half t squared on both sides so this goes out and this and this goes out and this so we have v squared over r equals g and then we get v equals the square root of gr so that's our formula for what's called the circular speed or circular velocity <clears throat> so let's see how this works out with numbers we'll use the altitude that the Saturn V went to 176 kilometers and the radius of the earth will use 6378 kilometers so we're going to use uh, R as being 6554 kilometers or 6.554 times 10 to the 6 meters now in our G we're going to now this is not the standard freefall G that we defined in uh, other <coughs> presentations this is the gravitational acceleration as a function of the R you happen to be at now if we take uh, the value at uh, sea level or at the equator 9.8 meters per second squared um, at a radius of 6378 as we go up from that altitude we will lose uh, acceleration by this uh, r squared uh, r at earth squared over r at orbit squared so this is a uh, this is basically because of newton's law that gravity goes with GMM over R squared. So this is how you get the G at different altitudes, or different radii, I should say. And it's only 9.28 meters per second squared compared to 9.8 at the uh, equator. So it's a little bit less when you're up at 176 kilometers.